Hi, Jacob. How are you? Hello. Good to see you. Hi, guys. <laughs> Kublai, how are you? Well, <laughs> see you, Raja. Oh, Charlotte. <laughs> hi, hi, Kublai. <laughs> we are at the factory in different rooms. <laughs> uh, when I started, maybe you just saw Kublai. You know, I'm still with these sanitizers. <laughs> <laughs> so, how is the voice, oh, everyone? How oh, incredible! Can you hear me clearly? And uh, mm -hmm. is everything all right? My voice. Yours is fine, Kublai. I find uh, Charette's a bit the, the the there's quite an echo when you speak, Charette. Oh, truly. Okay, so let me just maybe it's here the air condition is on, so maybe I can just yeah, sure, sure. put it on. Roger, Roger, where are you? This looks rather like Spain or France. <laughs> I think. The, we, uh, are, 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 I've been coming to the office most days. We've got very few. People, most people work from home, but this is an old converted barn. Nice. Uh, 100 years old. <laughs> wow. So oh, wow. next time you come over, you're very welcome to, Thank you. to look in. Yeah, I need, a, I need a haircut. I know that much. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have been unable to use um, barbers since January, beginning of January. They all closed, but they opened Isn't yesterday. It? But the queues are huge. The whole of England wants a haircut right now. So, <laughs> but at least, uh, <laughs> at least it's still there. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> it, I truly it's like the advantage, advantage of it's the advantage of barber shops. You know, even if they were closed, just people still need to go even when they open again. So you yeah, know, just well, piling up the demand. There's been a lot of haircuts done at home. A lot of a lot of marriages have had stress because of it. So, <laughs> so hello. So I guess we're gonna start in three minutes. In the meantime, uh, we're gonna have questions and comments from the chat part. I have just seen Hakan. Hakan, thank you so much. He just said that you know, hi from a very sunny, bright Istanbul. It's truly like that. It is like you know, 19 degrees or something. And in the morning, uh, we did have registration from 44 different countries, but um, right now it is 52. Wow. So we, we, we all have registrations from 52 different countries. Uh, so probably we're gonna have them all. Okay, that's perfect. So Dan, how is Antalya? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> we have the beautiful sun, but uh, the wind uh, is a little bit cold from the mountains we have around us. But um, it's beautiful weather for just exactly the 14 park. Jim, have you stayed open the whole time, or what's your operating? We we opened reopened uh, March, mm -hmm. uh, beginning of March, and then um, yeah, we continue our thing. We we did continue on 2020 also to from Mar uh, June to uh, end of um, October. Yeah, and is that mostly local um, guests? No, we have um, eighty percent is um, tourists, and um, wow. which is from Russia land and Europe. But this year, twenty twenty was low from Europe, mm -hmm. uh, high from Russia, and uh, but locals we don't have much locals here. Ten percent maybe. Uh, I look forward to hearing what you say a bit later. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, waiting for you. <laughs> I, will, I will never forget because we're going to hear all the news from you too from what's yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah. The Germans were allowed to go to to Spain to to Mallorca now over Easter, and mm -hmm. there was a big um, there's a big German travel operator, and he actually said you should go now because now we can promise you there are no Brits there. That's and nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we we wouldn't get any towels on the sunbeds anyway, would we? So. <laughs> <laughs> I think well managed in England, so hopefully the oh, lax in our Turkey. We'll see. It's been very austere here. It's really been um you no know, we've had we've had two the second lockdown has been the hardest by a long way. Um in fact and all our open, in, Roger. And that is you know that is that is so great to see that we're, we're starting yeah, but we're only we're a long way to go yet, Jacob. I mean yeah, no, still, none I mean, of the indoor really... pools will open for at least another month. Yeah, yeah, so all our least, indoors. You know, part of the industry is open, and you have a you have a. Uh, real... we're, yeah, you can see a way forward now. I mean, yeah. vaccination and testing is definitely the way it's going to go, but it's a long it's a long road. <clears throat> mm. But yeah, no, it's 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 opt optimistic, optimistic. 
Yeah. Okay. That is so a very nice quote there, Charette, in the back. Yes. <laughs> Here in my back? In your yeah. back? The, the, the quote on the wall behind you. Oh, yes. Very nice. Actually, this is a very nice word. Uh, when we first, you remember in 2014, when we changed our corporate image and when we um, started our new motto under experience, uh, this was a very nice quote. Uh, I have learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you make them feel. This is wonderful. Actually, maybe, you know, this is a good way to start, Jacob, because, you know, our industry is all about feelings, actually. It's all about, you know, happiness and experiences. So we truly change the way people feel when they come to the parks, actually. The people business. People business. How, 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 how nice this is. Okay, so actually, um, it is now 12. Yeah, Istanbul time. And I know that we have guests from 52 different countries. <laughs> so um, it is different time zones for everybody. So welcome all, we're truly happy to see you. Now our team will just play a very quick video and then we're gonna start. Kubilay, your screen, okay. Yes, we want to see your face. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you so much. So as you all know, this is the webinar uh, format of Zoom. Normally I like Zoom meetings better because we can see everybody here. Uh, but uh, now you'll be seeing the panelists and you're seeing two screens, Pulling Root and Pulling Water Parks. That's the marketing team. They're gonna help us with the organization throughout the webinar. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our very precious guests. And I must say that, you know, my hands are Truly cold, and I truly feel excited. I mean, I know Jacob, Roger, Jen for so many years. Kubilai, again, you know, we're working for so many years together. But all four of them are truly experienced um, industry people. Um, they are my friends, and I'm, I'm, I'm truly grateful. I mean, truly grateful that they accepted our invitation, you know, as soon as I just wrote them. And actually we were planning to do it earlier, but um, I'm so glad that we managed to do this now. It will be a very friendly talk. So even if we cannot see the faces of our guests, so we'll be taking the questions from the chat part. And so anytime you can just write to us. So, um, again, <laughs> welcome all. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, start with giving you a little bit information about this virtual summit series of pollen water parks. Actually, um, in this truly unparalleled time of uncertainty, uh, we truly believe that it's more than um, more important than ever to stay connected. So the aim of this virtual summit is just, you know, to stay connected and. You know, we just started with this wonderful quote, Jacob, thanks so much. Thank you so much for reminding me. <laughs> Our industry is such a unique industry. It's all about connection. It's all about feelings. It's all about people more than any other industry. Um, so I think any attempt, uh, IAPA are doing great, is doing a great job actually, you know, for, uh, for all of us, you know, to, to stay connected. Uh, WWA, all the other industry associations and the companies in our industry. So this is our attempt uh, to um, stay connected. Uh, this is the sixth time that we are gathering. We started in September 2020, and we had wonderful guests. And uh, so now I'm very glad that we are uh, welcoming you. Uh, the um, 
topic of this virtual summit is where the attractions industry is heading before and after COVID-19. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce you, uh, Roger Curry. Uh, he's the Director of Business Development uh, EuroAsia at Water Technology. And I don't know, Roger, how many years has it been since we know each other? <laughs> many, I think, sure. Many, I think. <laughs> 15, 20 maybe, but yes. <laughs> Roger has over 40 years of experience in the aquatic leisure industry and is a member of the Institute of Swimming Pool Engineers and an associate member of the Institute of Sport and Recreation. Um, and he has a very you know, long CV and you know, there are so many things to talk about him. Uh, he has also served on the WWA Board of Directors uh, between 2004 and 2010. And he has also served on the IAPA, uh, Europe Middle East, um, at the Education Committee since 2017. And so there's so many things to talk about you, Roger. So he's a truly an industry expert and very positive person. Whenever I see Roger, you know, you just see a smile on your face. And so, Roger, great to have you here. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you for having me. Yes. And I'd like to talk about Jacob. <laughs> Again, with Jacob, we know each other for so many, I don't know, Jacob, again, it's, it's been maybe 15 years, maybe more. <laughs> a, a long time, a very good long, long time, time, let's say it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jacob is the Executive Director and Vice President of IAPA, Europe, Middle East and Africa Operations. And he's, I mean, he's doing a great job, especially in this time. And so um, he serves as the IAPA again, Europe, Middle East, Africa office in Brussels. Um, he has a career of 15 years in the attractions industry. And um, there are so many things again to talk about him, but you know, I'm truly excited. And so uh, I'm very happy to see you, Jacob. Um, we are very happy to work with you personally and as polling group. Thank you, thank you for organizing this, and uh, thank you for, for having me thank on this. Thank you for this. accepting me and coming here. And Jen. Uh, Jen is the general manager of the Land of Legends theme park. As you might know, Land of Legends is a very good theme park in Turkey, in Antalya. Jen is going to talk about it in detail in a minute. Uh, but before that, um, he has uh, an experience around 20 years in Australia. Uh, he's been managing Dream World, White Water World, and Skypoint. And then uh, he came to Turkey. Uh, maybe you're going to remember. Uh, he just uh, worked in the setting up of Realand Team Park. And he has served as the operation director between 2013 to 2017 in Istanbul at Realand. And since 2017, uh, he's been managing a wonderful park. I and mean, if you haven't seen it yet, we strongly recommend that you do. And plus, we know that we have plans with Jacob. Maybe, you know, when this pandemic thing is going to be over, <laughs> maybe we'll have the chance to visit the park uh, with all industry people. And We'd thank love to so see much, that. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and I'd like to thank you also, Sharetia, in Turkey. Um, you jump-started the attractions and um, keeping us in... Um, uh, loop of everything and your uh, your work always towards positive to attraction gives us the energy also to uh, in Turkey to not to be forgotten and because mm -hmm. it's like only there's on three theme parks in Turkey and we're trying to uh, stay on about the uh, things and um, you're helping us on that too thank you for having me and uh, nice, nice to see Jacob and Roger here too thank you so much thank you so much and very precious, Dr. Kubilay Akdoğan. Uh, as you all know, Kubilay is the general manager of Polar Water Parks uh, since the beginning of 2018. Uh, he has taken this general management role uh, after having 11 years of board experience in sales and design in water park industry. Everyone knows Kubilay. So Kubilay, how can I just <laughs> explain you? I don't know. <laughs> Um, Kubilay is an industrial engineer holding degrees of uh, master's and doctorate again in engineering management, PhD in industrial engineering again. So here we are. So this is the team, you know me. <laughs> I'm the director of marketing and communications at Polling Group. 
Um, so very happy to have you here. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to start with the questions. And again, we're going to have the questions from the chat part. So anytime, please feel free to uh, write us. Okay. So actually, uh, we have prepared some questions, but as I'm telling, so it will be just flowing because you know in our industry everything is so how can I say natural from the heart. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, so my first question is for all of you actually. Uh, do you think that our industry will see any positive outcomes from the pandemic? I know that now we're having a hard time. Uh, but what do you think about this? Maybe, I don't know, can we start with, is there anyone who wants to start? <laughs> I'll, I'll start. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you mentioned about positive outlooks. And yes, I, I think the answer to that question is there will be a number of things that come out of this um, that are for the good. Um, I, I've been looking at a series of, of presentations myself um, and discussing them with, with uh, some of the IAPA education team about how COVID will change things for good. And there's two edges to that. It's for good. Things will never be the same again. I, I believe that in some parts that will be true. But I also think some of the things that have happened over the last 18 months and probably will happen for the next 18 months will turn out to be for the better. And you take things like Zoom, for example, uh, that what we're on today, <laughs> you know, um, 18 months ago, the chances of this type of forum would be that it had been happening, but certainly not to this scale. I'm, I'm looking at 144 participants, 50 odd countries. Now, that certainly is one way. It, it's if if you're into any of the green environment, the the, the reduction in air travel, um, and I, I think that will make us look differently. So I think yes, that there will be some things uh, that change, but I I I think in some ways we're not through this complete by a long way you know there's a long way to go and as we come through that I think that the outlook with vaccination and testing is now becoming much more positive but that has to be an international thing but as we go forward um, I think the opportunity to take the good things and mitigate the bad things that is where um, that is where the opportunity really lies yeah. and the recovery yeah. You're right, Roger. Thank you so much. I truly believe that obstacle is the way. Uh, I mean, as a biological organism, actually, you know, we're creative like that. You know, when there is an obstacle, so we can find another way. And I think our industry is so wonderful in adapting you know, these changes. I, this is a proof, for example. So it's been one year and we're one of the industries that's been affected most, maybe. But we're still, you know, here, connected, trying to find new ways and and I see that we're, we're all of them truly hopeful. I mean, mm. industry side, designers, associations, parks, and suppliers. And so I think that's wonderful. So David, do you want to Yeah, I, I think I, I agree with Roger. I think this pandemic has been an, an accelerator of certain trends. This this comes at a very high price. And I think we, we all agree that we would have liked to, to live without it. But now it's now that it's there, I think we need to see how we can actually use this, use this to become better and to prepare for a better future. And I think there, there are some, some aspects to it which we, which we need to consider. I think, first of all, there's a different appreciation set for actually what we do. I think the concept of entertainment has always been very strong with our guests, but now that they have not been able to enjoy this, um, they, they actually realize how important it is for the mental well-being. So I actually expect a, a increased increased demand and also an increased appreciation for for those kind of leisure activities together with friends, together with family. You know, which is which might not be in the same household. So I think that is that is a very important aspect of things. But also, I think from an operational point of view. Our industry and operators, and probably Chem knows that much better than I do, but talking to many of our members, we have become much more nimble and leaner, I think. You know, we stopped in many aspects doing things which we didn't find to be necessary anymore, where we obviously, you know, tried to save certain things. 
but this will actually help us, in my opinion, to become more profitable once we are through this. And I agree with Roger, we are not through it yet, but on a, on a long term, I think that will be very beneficial for us as an industry. And I, I just give you one example. Um, for me, it is a big subject. What we have seen with many attractions, it's online bookings. You know, this was, when you look at many facilities across, across the region, um, people always went and bought the ticket at the entrance gate. Mm -hmm. Now that it was required to reserve your time slot before, your ticket before, you can much better plan as an operator. You have much more visibility on how many people come. And I have heard actually many facilities saying, listen, even if we're not required to do it anymore, we will still keep on doing it because it's so much more helpful for, for, for operations plannings, for, you know, for calculation. And also it is much better for guest experience. This is an interesting aspect because I think it somehow forced the industry to become better in that. And it, we see that, you know, dynamic pricing now is everywhere. And that probably wouldn't have happened that quickly if we wouldn't have gone through this, through this horrible time. Mm -hmm. Well, Jacob, I mean, these are wonderful points. Thank you so much. First of all, you know, I truly like the appreciation part, you know, so when you lose something, you truly know what you have lost. And now, actually, you know what I believe? After the pandemic, we have realized how important uh, our industry is, you know, to keeping people happy, connected. And so that's truly wonderful. And this, you know, the, the things that you have just mentioned, you know, what this has brought as advantages to the parks, you know, all these online bookings and dynamic pricing and maybe, you know, managing time in a better way. So those are, so th those will be like, you know, good takeaways. We're going to take away from pandemic and then it's going to be over. So we'll be all together in parks in a strong way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Jen. Yes, as a operations here it's like um from the operation hut <laughs> um yes we i do realize the people uh, attraction business it can't be done on online online so attraction business has to be experienced and um, create memories and and people come here just creating memories so it is hard to hard to put this in um pandemic scare and also personnel, the staff and, and people working for people. And, and so we had to think uh, 360 degrees for everything we do. As Jacob said, yes, you're right. We saved it some money we didn't have to do anymore. And so we cut down staff member uh, capacity down too in the same time, yes. But um, uh, we couldn't create the real memories for the people, like, um, you know, everything more uh, queue lines to uh, the using time of the rides, like we had to sanitize each time used. And uh, online system, yes, it helps us very much uh, buying, uh, purchasing tickets. Uh, still has to be fit in Turkey's uh, economical thing. Online sales are very low. Uh, and in Europe, uh, Rulantica done the best uh, process on that and I've never seen anything like that uh, in my life uh, on this experience selling very well online and capacity limiting but this is not lucky for every attraction industry of course to manage that and um, but yeah for future we want able to yes we can do the zoom meetings and uh, maybe even the IAPA uh, expos online not that successful or successful maybe but definitely we can't do memories from online so mm -hmm. the attraction business is coming stronger uh, when all this is over uh, i believe truly believe yes we will we learned lots from this pandemic and and we will go more for digital yes we will go more uh, comfort for people uh, but the attraction business will go up and high, I reckon. Yeah, thank you so much, Jen. Thank you so much. And I'm, I, I know that, you know, you did a great job. Jen never lost his motivation from the very beginning. We've been co in contact uh, all the time. And so he's always like, you know, you know, I truly like this part of our industry. So, you know, <laughs> 
So it is wonderful. So he was always you know, trying to find ways to attract people. And uh, I don't know, maybe you know, our guests weren't uh, with us that time. We started chatting about 10 minutes ago uh, before the webinar has started. And uh, Roger asked uh, Jem when the park was open. And at the end of March, uh, Jem said that they opened the park. And last season also, they opened the park. And it's not only local people, but you know we uh, we still have tourists from Russia, Germany, and I don't know, Jen, maybe England. You can have, I don't know. But you know, yeah. I mean, in spite of all difficulties, uh, <laughs> so it's running. But I think it is it is what you, what you both said. You know, Jem and so that it's. I mean, this is a people business, and 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 somehow you know I think we are all in a certain way desperate optimists. Because Eckert, Eckert voted in the chat as well. I mean, this is an industry of fun. And if there's someone, you know, who can bring fun back to the people, it's us. And I think that yes, is why we need to be optimistic and, and, and are convinced of, of being able to do that. That's wonderful. And Jacob, I'd like to add something. Um, there is a, an Instagram. There is a, there is a, there, there is a person, I don't know him, but, you know, he just has a piece of, um, what is this paper? <laughs> Sorry for me, this paper. And his his Instagram address is something you know, dude with a sign. Okay, and you know, and every time he writes some messages, and then he shares those messages. And one of them was about that because you know, it's always like you know, we we expect somebody you know to do something you know to give happiness, to make a positive atmosphere, this and that. And um, but you know, it was it is in in one of his posts. It was uh, writing, you know, maybe that somebody is you. And so I think all of us, you know, has a role, you know, uh, to getting over this because, you know, we remain in this together. We just saw that the whole world, the whole industry. So we're on this together. And so each one of us, I think, has a, you know, it, it's just like that butterfly effect, has a role uh, to... Um, to maybe convert this into a positive way. So, <laughs> so thank you. And Kubilai, anything you would like to add? Maybe you can say how Poland may be doing to recover from the Poland pandemic. So. First of all, uh, <laughs> as Jacob said, I also saw what Eckhart wrote on the chat board and it was fun. I mean, uh, that's true that we, we have to keep our faces smiling <laughs> and uh, we have to be optimist. And uh, regarding the question, actually, I, I want to answer it from the manufacturer's point of view. Uh, a lot of projects have been uh, postponed during the pandemic. So I believe that by 2022, we will uh, hear a lot of new projects coming and new openings. That's what I believe from the optimistic point of view, maybe. And uh, this, is a, this is a good thing uh, because the projects have not been cancelled. They are all postponed. I mean, uh, people are waiting. The developers are waiting. And uh, secondly, sometimes, you know, uh, challenges are opportunities for the others. So I believe that you will hear more uh, park acquisitions, maybe uh, like uh, park consolidations in the near future, which will bring more uh, opportunities for the manufacturer's side as well, and also for increasing, uh, let's say, increasing uh, quality, uh, more experience, more fun to the uh, guests. And uh, actually, what, what I uh, see is that, I mean, the developers, the manufacturers, I'm sorry, the developers, the operators, uh, they were used to be more capacity driven. I mean, they try to have more and more crowds in their facilities to make more revenue, of course. But uh, because of this uh, physical distancing and these kind of uh, limitations, uh, now they, they are more value driven. I mean, uh, they are now looking at uh, valued experiences, maybe high, with higher uh, prices, uh, but uh, more uh, with the low capacity and with the higher prices and with the, uh, let's say, a higher experiences they will try to level up that's what i that's what i feel actually so maybe this is bad for the guests i mean in terms of paying more in in the in the, in the parks but uh, 
the bar of the experience quality will increase for sure. That's uh, what I feel actually. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Kubilay. In the meantime, I didn't have time to check the chat. Now I did. And um, this is wonderful. And thank you, Eckhart. Yes. <laughs> and we have people from India, Greece, Romania, Australia, Germany, Italy, Indonesia, China. So I've just seen their messages in the chat. So thank you all. Thank you so much, Kubilay. Okay. Uh, so Jacob, uh, I'd like to uh, ask you, uh, all the shows, almost all the shows, uh, are postponed, as you know, face-to-face uh, -face ones. Uh, what are your thoughts on virtual events? Because I thought it a great job. So I mean, you just made uh, the shows virtual, and they also, and you also made a lot of, you know, uh, local and global um, get-togethers and educational programs, networking events. But they were all online. So what do you think about them? What are the reactions? And what's your plans for the future? I, I, th I think there are, there are some learnings in, in that aspect as well. And, and today's session is, is a great example. I mean, we have over 150 people from, what did you say, over 50 countries. So yes. I think, you know, our, our industry is also recovering by the fact that we have never been closer with each other. I think, you know, this, th those past 12, 14 months, we have all gotten together, you know, we all worked together on, on getting through this, on learning from each other. And it was fantastic to bring people together. You know, you, you might have seen as I up, we did a, we did COVID protocols for safe operations in amusement parks and water parks across the world. And to, to create that, we got together the largest park groups from all across the world. And they all sat around the table, helped each other in finding the ways to really be beneficial for the whole industry. And I think this is where it's really wonderful what we have within this industry. And this was all created online and, and through those Zoom meetings. And, and Roger pointed it out. I mean, the, the way we have advanced in that is, is amazing. And I think our virtual conferences and our live chats and Chem was part of some of us, what we did with IAPA also are great learnings because you, you see how others are doing, you, you exchange best practices, you know, but I think also from, a, from an emotional aspect, it was important to see that others face the same uncertainty as I do, you know, that I'm not alone in this. And, and in, in that matter of fact, it was coming back to what we discussed before, we, we are a people business and it helps us to see each other, to see you know, people which we have seen at all those events. And I think while online meetings do this job very good, it will never replace a face-to-face -face meeting because I think again, you know, it's a people business, you just see people, you walk around, it's, it's wonderful to have those opportunities at the physical events. And this is why I'm convinced that and we see that from, from, from our talks with our members, with our exhibitors, that this is strong future still ahead for, for trade shows. Because also something which I have personally noticed over those past 12, 14 months, we have seen great concepts of virtual trade shows. But I think we all agree that you usually don't sell a product like a, like a great pool in water slide or a roller coaster from anyone else. You usually don't buy that online. You know, you, you, you need that that the talk with a supplier you need to sit with them to discuss those things and and i think that is where where we have noticed that as great as those online offerings are especially in terms of education in terms of exchange in terms of you know really kind of getting the deal done or negotiating and seeing what what new is out there we still need those physical trade shows. And this is where I'm very happy. You know, you, you might have seen, we, we go ahead with our three trade shows this year. We have started registration yesterday for, for the one in Shanghai and for the one in Barcelona in September. And then there's one in November. And I, 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 I honestly, and this is not speaking from a business, business point of view or from a commercial <laughs> point of view, but from a personal point of view, I can't wait to see all of you again. Uh, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob, are you guys planning for grand opening or APA again, face to face, big celebration party? <laughs> well, well, in in in, in Barcelona, in, in in Barcelona, you know, I can I can speak about what we plan for Barcelona. We wanna we wanna have a wonderful evening at Tibi yeah. you know, this beautiful we'll park be across, uh, above you. Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you also the same with 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 all of you and probably also the chat box. You know, safety is our number one priority. So obviously, you know, we are work, working very closely on the health and safety protocols and now it's a 
13th of April, and we talk about something which, which is in five and a half months. I think many of us don't know how the situation will look like in four weeks, but we, we are prepared to, to consider all eventualities, and we just honestly can't wait to, to have exactly that, that moment together again and to say, oh, I haven't seen you in a long while. So that's, yeah. I think that's a difference. <laughs> Jacob, you know, just dreaming about it is such a wonderful thing. So it puts a very big smile on our faces. And I truly agree with you. You know, I'm now, I guess you all know, uh, I have completed uh, my, uh, I mean, I'm doing my uh, second master's in neuroscience. And now we have started doing the uh, thesis here. We have a neural lab. And so from the neuroscientific approach, so I'm going to say that we shouldn't be forgetting that uh, as homo sapiens, sapiens, we are social creatures. So we are created like that. So now just um, as it happens in the nature, uh, as it happens in the nature, you know, at, at the previous time. So we're going from a transition period and as uh, smart creators, we have found all these, you know, online things and we have adapted the situation, but we shouldn't be forgetting that uh, we are social creators. So we need to be there face to face. So we truly, again, Jacob, not from the business perspective, but from my heart, <laughs> we truly want to be there at the exhibitions uh, face to face. And so and hopefully, so it will be very soon. So, Can I add something yes. on that? Please, Dan, please, Dan. Um, what Jacob did actually, I mean, Jacob's luck, uh, he got the pandemic to organize for us, but um, truly uh, being an IPA member always felt uh, not alone, but this time what Jacob's and the team organized was uh, all water parks and attraction industry, these meetings. In our dark times, they were on the lights. So if anyone on this panel or the uh, joiners not join the IPA, they're too late, they should join now. <laughs> because <laughs> we, we yes. really got together there and Jacob's talk and uh, even like we talked to uh, Siama Park, to Atlantis, to you know all these big names, big players in the game. It's like they were there with us and uh, gave us a big light, really. So truly it was great work, Jacob. I'd like to thank you that on that. Thank you, Cem. That is that is very nice to hear to hear from you, and and thanks to yeah. to, to Roger. Yeah. It's a teamwork, and it, it's it's a question of how much people bring in, and I think it's the same with with what you do here, Soret and Kubilai. You know, yeah. bringing people to, together to really you know learn from each right. other and go through this. So thank you very much. If I could maybe just add a, a couple of observations to that. I mean, I think particularly in our industry, you know, uh, it's entrepreneurial. And one of the things that this misses is that ability, that that face-to-face, touchy-feely. If I'm normally talking in front of 150 people, there's part of me just making sure nobody's falling asleep. <laughs> or uh, right now, I've got no idea what uh, 150 guys are doing. Every time I talk, they probably yawn or go and get a cup of tea or something. I, I don't know. But th the other important part of that on a more serious note is the fact that because there is a very strong entrepreneurial base right across our industry from operators, to designers, to manufacturers, to the guys who create the new rides and ideas we have, one of the things that you always notice at any of the major trade shows, WWA, IAPAs, all the, all the regional stuff, is that it's the ability for that feeding off each other how you can have a conversation in a bar over a drink and all of a sudden there's, there's creativity coming out and as good as this forum is you that is what you miss and that is why like Jacob I am so looking forward particularly to the autumn by the autumn hopefully the majority of us are going to be able to travel without too much quarantine restrictions and the autumn shows this year I think will really start to tell us how this industry is coming back and that's what we're missing that's what we're all missing i i know from my experience on the subcommittee i sit on with uh, with jacob you know we were desperate for, there was a fantastic effort to try and get something running at europa back in february it, everything just worked against it it just couldn't happen but the the desire to get 100 200 how many i can't remember how many people it was now jacob but you were oversubscribed with people just wanting for that to happen so um. 
we we are in an industry that I, I was asked once about the recovery. I know that's one of your questions a bit later. I don't think I can think of a better group of people. If anything's going to come through this with the way that people have created parks and created ideas and if anybody's going to come out of this and be creative doing it, it's going to be our industry. So again, from a positivity point of view, that I think is is something I'm holding very on strongly on to. Oh, thank you so much, Roger. This is, you know, while listening, it's just like, <laughs> thank you so much. This is wonderful um, insights. And I also totally agree with you. And yes, Jacob, we were very excited that we're going to come to Europa Park in February. And Kubilay and I, we were ready. <laughs> we, so so where we are we? Said, you know, I think, I think Corona... said, we're going, we are ready, you know? <laughs> I think Corona wasn't ready for us. And that was yeah. a challenge. But, you know, plans <laughs> yeah. have been made and we will we will execute them at a later stage. And I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not concerned yeah. about that. Yeah. Because there is an energy inside which has been kept for like more than one year now. So we have yeah. to release that energy, right? <laughs> so again, thank you so much, uh, Roger. And uh, Jen, uh, from the operation part. So uh, I'd like to ask this question. Uh, so people... I mean, of course, you know, they, they do have some hesitations in spite of the fact that they miss the parks a lot. So um, especially from the psychological uh, perspective, I know that from the hygiene, from the health, you know, the social distancing and other stuff. So I know that the land of legends is doing the best, you know, all of the precautions and all of the cautions that we, we know all of them now, because, you know, when it started in March last year, uh, we were all caught, caught up, so we didn't know what to do, but now we know all of those and Land of Legends are doing them all. But from the psychological perspective, are there any things uh, you're doing uh, for people to make them feel safe for themselves and for their kids, uh, safe at the parks? Uh, yes, definitely. We have to display the best to guests. Uh, so the attraction industry, you know, culture is the safety first. Uh, that's what I brought uh, 2013 uh, from uh, coming from Australian standards, trying to set up a park in Turkey, in Istanbul. The first theme park was safety first. Uh, I wasn't understood by anybody uh, in the company I was working for. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, what we try to display the guests from entrance to slides to FMB, we try to do the safety first culture. In pandemic, this put an extra work on us. Uh, so showing them like, a, you know, aqua parks, the first hygiene starts from toilets. So toilets has to be first hygiene displayed in the aqua parks and dry parks. But um, people see that and they trust your water, they trust your everything. So th that's why we try to start the people uh, trust us psychologically because um, the kids there, they don't use masks and, uh, and the lots of cultural people together. So what they had to see is the, as a, uh, as a uh, management here in the park is done for everybody. Uh, not uh, there's any other uh, explanations like uh, excluding any other parts. So we, we retrain the staff to how to uh, warn people even like uh, in the pandemic times. So they, they do trust us, again, uh, customer view, uh, do how to wave because we have the masks, they look like doctors. So kids are scared of us. So we, we trained all the stuff in our dolphin stadium, putting uh, four or 500 people there, how to smile with the mask. So we, we try to give people that feeling we are not doctors, we are not uh, in danger. Uh, so we started from the toilets uh, using sticky, sticker uh, safety, like if, the, if it's broken, not use. So it was a lot of work, but it paid us back as people really admired our hygiene standards. Even they couldn't walk around whole park, but they see they, everyone goes to the toilet. So <laughs> that's where we hit the people hard and um, they were happy with us. Um, 
they were trusting us. Uh, as I said, baby steps, we showed it in the toilets first. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. Okay. So I think it's also very important, you know, um, to give that message that, you know, we're taking those precautions um, properly. And so, you know, people truly feel safe. So I think parks also has a role in this, maybe, you know. Um, okay, thank you so much, Jen. And Kubilai, uh, I would like to ask what Boeing is doing to recover from the global pandemic. <laughs> actually, sure, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. Yeah, but actually, Boeing maybe here is like a metaphor because now Boeing is representing because it representing the uh, water park, water slide supplier companies. Maybe now I mean we can see what oh, those definitely. companies yeah. are doing. So. <laughs> Yes, I'd like to say hi to all of our competitors if uh, there is anyone here. So, so yeah, I mean, what does uh, water park suppliers, designers, engineers, you know, producers, water site producers are doing at this point? I believe that, I mean, in, in the beginning of the speech, I was, uh, I tried to say that um, the operators are now looking more into uh, experience value. So I think all the suppliers like us, are now working on this value. I mean, how to increase this value as, as product, as experience mm -hmm. uh, to offer to their clients uh, for the coming years. So this is what we have been doing because we have to consider the post-pandemic environment. We should focus on this. I mean, yeah. uh, we cannot leave it, you know, thinking about uh, the pandemic, which is like everything in our lives, but we have to consider the future. So what we are doing, I mean, we are trying to, uh, work out this uh, value, the experience, which means, I mean, uh, the, 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 let's say the uh, meaningful, uh, something meaningful for the environment and the people. So uh, as Pauline, we were working on uh, disability. Uh, you know, we have the All Can series, All Can uh, product line. So we work with disabled people how we can let them experience the fun, uh, the joy in the parks. And uh, the other thing is uh, the neuroscience thing that you also mentioned, which you are leading in the company, which is very important because uh, we are trying to understand the real happiness in the attractions. I mean, so we are, as, as you mentioned in the beginning, uh, we are measuring and testing uh, the real time happiness uh, on the rides while they are, while they, Yes, are trying. So this is crucial, not the artificial one, but uh, the real-time happiness. And the other thing is the sustainability, of course. I mean, we are all now focusing on uh, sustainable programs. So it should be not only one part of the water park or the theme park, but it should be uh, covered by all, integrated with all, the, the entire park actually, including the attractions itself. So we should also design uh, sustainable uh, attractions now and of course now uh, during the pandemic we got a lot of digital content so digitalization is now uh, very uh, is a very trend topic so we, we should work on the attractions adding more AR VR things maybe some digital contents like IOT uh, integrations so we are working on these uh, also products also, touchless surfaces are now important. So we should create a touchless environment to reach to the attraction. Maybe this is another thing. Um, what else? Also, new products. I mean, uh, the IP is more and more now in our parks. It's, uh, again, uh, the, the storytelling is like, uh, it's integrated more with the uh, entire park now. It's not only in the one part, but the entire park. Is, uh, is, uh, is telling the story actually. We are, I mean, everybody is now focusing on this, so we are doing it as well. You know, we started uh, having like uh, themed attractions like uh, King Cobra in uh, 2008, firstly, and the attraction became themed itself instead of making some decorations around it. So uh, the part, the story is uh, told more efficiently with the attraction. And uh, 
since then, I'm mean, this king cobra converted into many things like dragon for a dragon park or a Finnish ship for uh, Indonesia, uh, for a park in Indonesia, or even Humangazor slide in the Cartoon Network Amazon Water Park. So the attractions should be uh, themed. So we have now three new uh, slides coming up. We will launch at the first IAPA, Jacob, <laughs> the physical <laughs> one, hopefully. We're looking forward to the award yeah. program, Brass Ring. <laughs> uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah. So the basic idea here is, uh, to design a slide which is, uh, let's say, which can be customized according to each kind of uh, theming. And uh, the last thing we are working on is the art entertainment. I mean, uh, this is the new concept. So we try to add arts in, in, in the parks. Since we are all blocked in lockdown, so we need to see some more arts maybe around us. So what we did, we uh, launched a new texture. Uh, that means you design the texture on the slide. This is good for all, for everyone. Everyone can design something and we can make it uh, on the slide. We have this technology right now. Uh, this is also good for the park designers, architects, that they can design whatever, not only the park, but they can also design the attraction itself and we can make it uh, come true easily. So. Basically, now uh, the world is changing and we have to be updated, you know, all the time. So as like all manufacturers, we have to update ourselves uh, for the post-pandemic environment. So these are the things that we are doing at Polin. Thank you so much, Kubilay. This came to my mind. In the very beginning, when it just started, we felt lucky because we had an office in Shanghai. So we were informed prior and you know we have already you know we, we've been aware of this maybe before every anyone else in Turkey but uh, at the first meeting I remember that it was an in-house meeting and then um, I just said that you know we have two things to do you know either we're gonna be a victim or we're gonna be a doer so we're gonna choose between these two I mean if we are a victim then we're gonna complain I mean something bad is happening and the whole world is now shut down and the parks are you now uh, in a very, very bad shutdown. So always complaining and always asking when, when is this going to be over? So, I mean, this is too bad, but we can also be a doer, you know, I mean, we can see some ways, you know, to get over this and we can get together and we can establish teams. And also we have a role. I mean, we have so many parks that we have done so far. We have wonderful friends from all over the world. And so I said, as, as our group, let's you now be a doer and you know, let's you now give positive uh, messages in, um, in the team. And you know, also with all of our partners, business partners, guests, parks, and everybody. So we chose the second way, we chose to be a doer. I guess our industry chose to be a doer, you know, because it's been one year, as I was telling from at the very beginning. So I think we did a great job. Thank you. Kubilay. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can I add one thought? Because I think, Kubilay, what you just expressed is, is, is wonderful when you talk about, you know, accessibility, about sustainability. And, yeah. and I think, you know, you, you are very well known for your innovations and, and in a certain way, this industry was on a one, you know, we had, we had 10, 15, 20 great, great years. And I know many suppliers out there, you know, who said it was hard for them to keep up with the demand because, you know, there was just so much coming in. And now that, you know, what you said, it's that several projects are on hold. I see many companies, you know, investing into research and development into what you exactly say, you know, what, when, when, when you now strengthen this, those important aspects like accessibility and I think we all agree yeah. that this is super important it gives me excitement for for the next years to come because I know you know back in the offices of of you there are some great new things coming to life right now so <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm very very much looking forward to to what is actually happening right now thank you so much thank yeah so I've much. also just a couple of things to add, add to both really and picking up on Kubli's um, comments and, and his previous one actually I mean um, that there are definitely layers to this whole COVID story you know there's international there's national there's regional now for example even in the UK until this Monday what England did was different to what Scotland did to what Northern Ireland did and to what Wales did all, all 
all within the same uh, same set of country um, and that is local situations dictating what's going on now one of the things and this is again keeping the positivity uh, note going where you know, there was mention of projects being delayed um, in the UK, one of the things the government did, rightly or wrongly, was insist that all construction sites stayed open. And that fed, it was clearly an a economical driver, but that kept the business chains moving, uh, contractors still working, uh, suppliers still supplying. But the, the other overriding thing here, and this is where the positivity is, from a design stance, hardly any and we've almost never been busier particularly in places like the middle east at the moment that there's surging markets they have all kept going we've carried on designing therefore we are in constant communication with with the polines and other ride vendors and uh, people who make attractions to get the latest ideas in a covid um uh, environment if you like so for example one of the discussions we've been having on one of the major jobs we're doing is is um the the rides which you know you can have four five six people now even eight um and how they they're operated in the past i've seen very successful parks operated in korea in the middle east where you get people with six um six folk in a single tube which are clearly aren't often always this from the same family group or, or or social group and they they do it by bringing people forward to fill up a ride because a, a six person ride goes best with six people in it um that is one thing i anticipate some parts of the world might you know that the the option of filling you know myself and my wife in, in a queue and then there's a, there's a group of uh, youngsters or whatever it is, and we are asked to go and join them i'm not sure how from a social distancing perspective that's going to be so there is a sort of knockback effect as to what ride selections and how operators are thinking um now clearly you can drive that in, in a number of different ways but the good news is, unlike all the previous recessions we've been through, when design was one of the first things to stop, and that then meant there was a two-year turnaround until everything, you know, got up to being the, being the sort of top of the food chain, if you like. Um, so I think this importance of research and development and coming up with new new ideas and responding to the way that Chem is giving feedback on the way his park's operating, that will be different to the way other parks in different regions will be working because their COVID, very often government driven restrictions will be different. So there's this, this necessity, going back to what I was saying about this entrepreneurial nature of our industry to keep that going. But the good news is as we come out of the, these projects are still going. A few have been delayed in construction in certain parts of the world, but generally that the, the whole process is still keep going. So this ability to react to the different COVID and, and by that I'm also talking about queuing for entrances, changing layouts, um, queuing in, in rides, the, the way passive areas uh, have previously been designed, food and beverage, re the way people go through retail, um, that the managing of guest flow, all of those are things where there's a, as an, as an industry wide from suppliers to operators, to vendors, to designers, that is where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Roger. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's wonderful. So uh, I was going to ask this actually, you already replied and this was a wonderful um, comment. Thank you so much. Yeah, this ability to react. And Roger, I'd like to also ask, uh, what do you do as water technology? Because you also have a global structure. And um, during this pandemic, so um, are you working online? I mean, from um, offices? So how is it going? Maybe. <laughs> yes, again, I mean, uh, we, we've got several offices in the US. Uh, we've got uh, a major office here in Europe, uh, Middle East and um, Far East bases as well. And again, we are driven here by government regulation. So in the, in the European office, um, majority of our folk are still working from home. The government still got an edict in place. If you can avoid going to work, avoid going. Uh, but as I say, we've got 
20 odd construction sites all going so they have to be supported and served so we're a little bit mix and match we have to keep the office going so we've got uh, a selected number and sometimes on a rotational basis of people coming in we've got screens put up to ensure two meter distancing and all, all, all the all the social requirements um a lot of what we're happening in the UK highlights the individual responsibility. You know, CHEM can put all sorts of uh, um, regulations and facilities into place, but if folk come to his part that don't want to wear masks or don't want to respect uh, two metre or one metre spacing arrangements, um, that's going to present a, a problem. And uh, in the main, and again, I think because this is a global thing, this whole thing has affected almost everybody uh, in the world. And because of that, unlike previous where we've had for example terrorist restrictions in certain parts of the world or there's been more isolated SARS maybe as an example more isolated uh, e epidemics previously this is this has affected everybody so I think there's a collective response to that that um, is part of that but yes as a company um, what we're doing in the US it's similar to what we're doing here um, we're okay. trying to get folk back. again going back to it's so much easier if I go down into to my office now and I've normally got 20 odd guys around me that I can pull together in a couple of minutes to have a conversation now I've got a plan a call and half of them are on the phone and others are you know, I don't know where they are um, it just makes life so much harder so again this this ability to come in to feed off each other uh, we would love to get everybody back as, as soon as we are legally allowed and um, mm -hmm. we can do it responsibility I think the biggest thing I'm noticing is just the, the way in which the, the ultimate clients we serve, which is predominantly the operators, the way that they um, are, are pulling together resources, the way those resources are being shared through. I know it's a question for later, so I won't go into that now, but the, the, the international associations and how all this in, information is shared, even though it applies differently, it, it, there is this um, wealth now of information available. Um, predominantly, though, I think the main differences I'm noticing between the international and national and to some degree regional is the, is the government uh, dictates that have to apply to those areas. They, they are the ultimate driver. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Roger. Thank you so much. Jacob, anything you'd like to add for IAP offices, maybe? Yeah, just interesting enough, what, what Roger just said, you know, the interesting aspect is that it's often the authorities defining it, but in terms of our activities, the authorities don't know what we know, you know, and it's often that we have seen that, you know, members of us came with, with that reopening guidance, which we did and said, this is our guidance, and the authorities said, oh, yeah, that makes sense, because in a certain way, they trusted us in knowing how to operate a theme park. A politician or someone working in the authority can never understand how we operate it. We just need to prove them that we are aware of what we do and, and how mm -hmm. we do things. But coming back to your question, what, what Roger said, same here. Um, you know, in Belgium, the situation where we have our, our EMEA offices is not much better. So we, we, we are working from home office. We are used to that now. And we miss each other. And it's exactly that, you know, you can't just go down to the other office and say, have you worked on that? But you need to set up a call and all of that uh, complicated things. But I think it, it, it will change the way we work. And, yeah. and, and when, when we talk about office, office environments, you know, yeah. I think um, in two years, the this, this situation will look completely different to what we would have ever expected, you know, because again, yeah. you know, it's an accelerator. Of, of certain trends. And we now have seen that, you know, home office works for most of the people or, you know, Zoom conferences. So right. maybe, you know, I, I don't know. I can imagine that uh, many office companies might might reduce the office space and say, listen, we meet once a week for one day and then everyone works from home. And so I think we, we will still see a lot, a lot of changes in, in, in that environment, which will create create some, some interesting dynamics. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Jacob. I totally agree with you. It will be about office spaces, the way we work, and the way our kids get education. I think it's going to change. And, and one thing which I wanted to say, because Kubilai mentioned it before, and I think that is a key, key, key difference in what we say. Kubilai, you mentioned physical distancing. And, and I'm, we are not talking about social distancing because we still, 
you know, are socially close to each other. We are just not physically close to each other. And this is where I think it is very important to make that difference where I sometimes wonder why did we all start with social distancing while it's actually physical distancing. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Thank you. Thank you, Kubila. <laughs> Physical distancing, it's not social distancing. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Jen, from the Land of Legends perspective, anything you would like to add? Well, um, first, when it came out, this uh, pandemic, we didn't know where to look at. And um, of course, <laughs> everyone, all the, all the operators looked at the IAPA. It's like, you know, what are we going to do now? <laughs> and um, so like thank mark. god yeah i mean you know seriously it's like um i mean even in china webinars from home in three in the morning to listen their experience because we had no experience here china had um open and closure uh if you do remember they opened it i think two weeks later they closed everything back again and and how we not to get that point uh scary part uh, of the parks we had uh, but again i have a being a IAPA member paid us back on that too. It's like, as I said, that in darkness was the biggest light was IAPA and all the parks got together. And now what I'm holding here is like park protocol, which is, uh, I could train my guys with something. And um, so that gave us a big power. And uh, what we learned from this, what we're going to add on more, already in the park, touchless payments and everything going, but we learned we need an application who does the food and beverage orders uh, and the queue line system and all that. So we're going to work on that. So we, we try to, as Jacob and the Kubilai, actually they should put name, his name is in the history of the world of the peopleization, civilization part. He was so right. It's a physical distance, not social distancing. Uh, even my kids in Australia, they say social distancing. Now they sing all uh, kids' psychiatrists because uh, social distancing became social culture to stay away from everybody. Uh, which is if Kubilai talked in the first beginning, now it will be physical distancing, it will be clearer. So, yeah, we will use this uh, digital power and um and digital power will give us more physical distancing we believe and people will be more happy with this uh, to use in the parks also it will get more important <laughs> thank you so much Jim. and uh, before taking the questions i'd like to ask one last question uh, uh, before that can i can i add oh, one please, please could you like please do so uh, before that, Roger has mentioned about uh, the design concerns now uh, after the pandemic environment. So I believe that, I mean, uh, I especially use that word physical distancing because uh, between human beings, you cannot make any social distancing. I mean, they, they somehow find a way to get in touch uh, with the others and socialize. It's, it's uh, obvious. So uh, physical distancing is, since it's crucial uh, for the parks, I believe that uh, we should be more digitalized in the parks, like we should use the park management programs, park management systems to uh, keep people uh, in, in different, uh, in, in separate uh, distances. And also maybe uh, this pre-booking uh, apps are now more important in our lives uh, so that the operators can uh, foresee the capacity and manage the capacity all through the park, through the day, through the week, you know. So uh, that's why these are uh, the crucial tools we need to uh, develop and uh, work out. That's what I believe. And there's some wonderful examples, Kubila, you know, I think, I'm not sure if you have seen it, but Europa Park had included in their app like a, like a small gamification aspect where yes, you know it's a yes, closed yeah. radar if you're too close to someone you know it gives you a beep or something and that is obviously on, on a big scale but we also have a small park in Denmark Sommerland Sjeland which introduced beacons throughout the park so he could see literally where everyone was moving around and could you know by by inciting with offers move people around. So he saw there were too many people in the line for the pizza stand. So he sent them all a text and said, come back in two hours and you get a 10% discount, which was, which was very cool, very innovative technology of 
really trying to, to have a crowd control where in, in our arguments with politicians, we always say, listen, we know how to move our people around because you know we are experts in that and you need to trust us that we can operate safely. And, and I'm so glad that we did because if, if you look back at last year, you know where we operated, we are not aware of any COVID cluster coming from a theme park visit. And that is something which, which we cannot forget. You know, listen, we, we showed that we know how to do our business and we know that infections happen, are happening inside in offices, but they're not happening in our outdoor amusement parks and, this is, and, and water parks. And I think this is, this is just important to stretch again and again. Mm -hmm. uh, Jacob, uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't want to make any advertisement here, but uh, I think I'm doing right now, but we are working on we are working on a park management system as well because this will be uh, one of the necessities that we will need in the water parks or theme parks because uh, we are going more into you know uh, touchless surfaces, uh, more hygiene environments. I know Jim can tell better than me uh, his needs. I mean in his park, uh, but. Uh, as, as the manufacturers, I think this is one of our responsibilities to work on, uh, to consider these uh, circumstances. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. the, these are very, inter <laughs> very interesting points uh, from uh, going back to the design, um, if you like, the, the COVID related uh, design considerations. Now, and also what Jacob was saying about local authorities, governments not necessarily understanding our industry. If you look at it in the in in the cold light of day, in an outdoor water park, and I'm, we don't have many in the, in in the UK itself. The vast majority we got are, are, are indoor. I'll pop back to that in a minute. But in an outdoor water park, we have a naturally ventilated site, and we know ventilation is one of, is one of the key things. Whenever we're laying out or designing a park, selecting the number of rides, all the square meterage assessments we do are in excess of what some of the social distancing requirements are stipulated by the majority of governments that we work with. So we're well within the, the, that area. Even in indoor installations, we have ventilation systems that are highly sophisticated for design. We have chlorinated water that we know doesn't transmit uh, chlorine. Uh, sorry, doesn't <laughs> COVID shouldn't, shouldn't transmit too much chlorine either for that matter, but it, it, it doesn't, um, uh, it, it is COVID um, resistant. Um, we have cleaning policies. You go to any well-run water park, you'll always see people cleaning down everything from the, re the reception areas, particularly the, the toilets and the changing rooms. They're all obviously now being in soup. So there, it's difficult to understand there being many more COVID protected areas in terms of volumes uh, area assessments and ongoing practices. Yet in the UK, for example, indoor water parks are being rated the same as indoor swimming pools, and they will be the very last public facility that's allowed to reopen. So there's a, there is a frustration within the industry because of that. You know, they're being penalised by at least another four to six weeks beyond other theme parks and facilities that, that open this week. So there is an education element to that, and there is a relative um, issue that we are designing well within the parameters being laid down. Where the issue arises is once you get those people in the park, you can't necessarily dictate how they behave and where they go. Going back to my earlier comment. And so systems that don't necessarily herd people, because that would obviously meet, but subtle systems that do it in the way that Jacob was, was describing about discounting of, of certain, giving incentive for, for doing things, pre-booking a ride, that definitely is another area where there's great potential. And we, we were already, we we're ready, many of these things we're talking about, we were seeing coming in anyway, you know, work practices. We knew that over the next three to five years, more and more people will be based from home. This is a set accelerated that probably by a decade, you know, this whole thing. Some things will stay, some things will go. And indeed, some of these things we're now doing in water park, both indoor and outdoor water park designs. So they that's where we were going. There, there were uh, 
crowd control, people control, monitoring systems, everything from monitoring where your child's gone to giving you where very smart systems were all coming on. I think we're going to see a huge leap in both the technology behind that and the different sources that are going to be providing it. So going back to say what what's Kobe going to change for good? I, I think that would be a, a key one. But Jacob's absolutely right. Getting over to people who make laws to understand, actually, we're probably one of the safest uh, areas, providing we're managing uh, the folk when they get in the centre. Um, that is unfortunately something we have learned. And in terms of canvassing and lobbying for future understanding, I think water parks are perhaps misunderstood as to what they actually are in a lot of uh, government um, mm -hmm. assessment. Thank you so much, Roger. So mm -hmm. these are wonderful to hear. So the, the discussion is so nice and I truly didn't understand how this one, one, one hour and 10 minutes actually. So I have one question for all of you actually. Maybe now I can have like two, three sentences and now we can have the uh, questions. Um, you're, all, you're all working in leader position. Uh, do you think, uh, or during this pandemic, is there any superpower that you discovered during the pandemic as a leader? <laughs> Actually, this just came to my mind. So, I mean, anything that you discovered during the pandemic, uh, personally, you know, as a leader, Jen, for example, you start. <laughs> I learned about myself. <laughs> I can implant anything in three hours. <laughs> System. So, stop. Go. <laughs> so, you know, because you know, as human learned. beings, when we get out of our comfort zone, Jen, we find solutions. So as I was telling at the very beginning, obstacle is away. So I was just wondering. So you're truly a wonderful leader. So much experience in this industry. You served a lot. This last one year, anything specific you discovered? Yeah, uh, so that you can implement anything in three hours. Implement so. it in three hours, <laughs> all park can start moving the other direction. <laughs> um, as I, uh, yeah, we learned the quick solutions and thinking pandemic all the time is like something not certain uh, to deal with is uh, very hard. And uh, I think management wise was. Uh, I won't use the word, but the worst year is like, and, um, but um, yeah, we got over that. We got used to that and um, we got more uh, strength in the management. Uh, as Roger said, we can't force people to do things and follow our rules. Yes, you're right, Roger. It's like they don't wear masks and they don't do uh, physical distancing. And, um, but uh People start to train each other too, like in the park, and, and they understand more. The tolerance levels are low, so we know that. And uh, so we know how to behave in the tolerance levels too. So we learned the toughest management rules, I think, in this 18 months. I think it'll be fascinating, Chem, when your European guests come back from Germany, from France, from the UK, what their, how they react um to what you're currently experiencing from what would appear to be places that have been either less covid in, uh, affected or less covid yeah. restricted um and i was having this conversation only with a, a uk operator uh, yesterday about the different you know there are some people mainly younger folk i think who just see getting back to normal as almost being an expectation give it another few months that you know nightclubs and all that that they're they're in for, in for that i think there is a circumspection about other things you know we've noticed there's been a huge fall off in flu epidemic this year because of social distancing because of masking and people are thinking well actually if there's a way i can do that you know do, do i really want to mix with all these people all the time you know if I can have a bit of space can I do that and I'll be very interested to see what's really been ingrained into us you know we, we've been educated uh, some would argue probably dictated to over things we can and can't do um, there have been some benefits to that you know um, I think generally speaking other health matters have been um, be, being better contained there are other underlying health uh, issues that have been sidetracked by the prioritization of COVID, which I think is yet 
yet to come through. But in terms of people, what their expectations are, I'll be fascinated. I'd like this time next year, to, uh, if I'm on a panel, I'd like to invite you to join it and to <laughs> say how these different people from the different parts of Europe in particular, but also worldwide, how they all acted when they started to come to your park again. Sure, yeah. sure that if you if you allow me, uh, and I really don't want to do kind of promotion things here, but it is exactly that aspect because you know we see parks in certain areas of Europe being open again now after all those restrictions. So we are, as IAPA are doing a live chat in two weeks time where we have operators from those countries because I think it is exactly that. It will be interesting to see how people right now react when they go back to 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 a theme park. So I think that's. We, we, we don't really know yet on, on how they will handle that. So I think that's, if you allow me for that, for that little. No, no, no that, that's great. So in two weeks time, so exactly what's the day? You also tell the day. I, so I, you know, you, you will see it on our platform. <laughs> but, but, okay. we'll about it. <laughs> but that's wonderful. Okay. But interesting. And when you ask about superpowers, I would like to add superpower. one thing. Any superpower that you discovered as Jacob. <laughs> it, it, it is not a superpower and it's nothing probably which is, you know, revolutionary, but something which I have realized over those past 14 months, I think we were all in situations where we had to make tough decisions and decisions yeah. which were which were difficult, which were not fun. And, you know, I'm, I'm we, we all went through that. And I think what I learned was brutal and honest communication with everyone involved helped a lot to go through those, you know, because we were all facing that uncertainty. And the more honest you were with, with people, with your teams and saying, listen, this is where we stand right now. This can happen. And then this will happen. You know, this will be our reaction. So kind of, you know, embracing them and taking part on or having them being part of, of that road of the understanding, which what the company goes through from my perspective helped a lot because it, mm -hmm. it just gave them the feeling that, you know, they, they, there's so much uncertainty in the world right now and to give them at least a little perspective with scenarios and saying, listen, you know, it can happen that we need to take certain cuts in, in, in salary or in, 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 in staff, you know, this is what we will go through. And I think in that way, you know, um, a brutal and honest communication helps. And I think it is also something which, you know, when we talk again about our industry and not talking about, you know, the office life, I think it helps in, in operating a park, you know, to be very straightforward in communication. This is how we operate. This is what you get. This is what we also expect from you. And it is interesting to see that certain parks actually work with COVID ambassadors. So they said, listen, I'm, I'm in such a themed environment that I don't want my my, my themed staff to be the police, you know, that, that they shouldn't do that. They shouldn't kind of bring that to our guests. So they kind of introduce safety ambassadors or, or COVID ambassadors, you know, trying to have people stick to the rules. And we all know that this is difficult because you just have those two groups now in your park, which we never had because you have those people believing in it or, or you know, being concerned about it and you have those people not believing in it and and there's a conflict right now in the park and this is where you need to moderate it in a, in a neutral way as an operator without offending anyone or without kind of you know trying to 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 harm anyone and i think that is that is a challenge where you can just go through in being very clear in communication in setting your play rules and in a certain way monitoring them through someone who's doing it in a friendly way but who's not kind of, you know, um, doing it in, 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 in a role which they normally don't have in, in, in the daily mm -hmm. park life. Jacob, thank you so much for sharing this. I truly believe in that as well. At Pauline also, we try to do the same um, with our suppliers, with the parks, within the team. So you said that straightforward, open communication uh, from the heart and you're making uh, feel everybody that you know we're, we're all in this together so uh and so while finding a solution we should be doing that together thank you so much so wonderful suggestion and at the same time what you were saying is also very you know um just impressed me because this covid uh, ambassador idea so it, it's 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 not like a police not like controlling you know very you know um, like the police but it is more like you know voluntary and so it is so if you do so it will be good for all of, for all of us so uh, so that's wonderful thank you very much could we like 
Would you like to say what? What I did totally you discover with, with your Actually, I, I totally agree as with you. I mean, as a leader, uh, if I answer it uh, in a, personally, uh, recently I'm reading a book uh, called uh, Not Doing, The Art of Effortless Action. And, uh, you know, I mean, most of the people, they know me. I mean, I'm a tempered person. Uh, I'm, I'm always busy running and, you know, running with a full agenda and, you know, trying to save the world, so on. So uh, uh, during the pandemic, I was stressed a lot, like everybody. So, but uh, what I noticed is that then uh, I, like in the book, I found myself, I don't know how it, it happened, but I tried to stay calm and uh, stay away the problem, stay away from the problem and try to watch it uh, from outside. So sometimes we, uh, in the book, it says that sometimes we uh, need to place a space in what we are doing. You know, space is like a material. So it's like that. Sometimes we should stop and leave it there. You know, what, what, and watch it, uh, watch it is passing, you know, watch how it is passing by, you know. So sometimes I did it. Uh, I don't know how, but now I understand it while I'm reading this book, actually. So sometimes we should stay away from the main problem, main issue, and then uh, think, you know, a kind of a med meditation, maybe, I don't know, but very calmly uh, try to think. You know that a lot of uh, answers will uh, come up when, when you stay away from the uh, problem itself. So I, I noticed this uh, personally in my... Uh, in me, thank, you so much. thank you so much, Kubilay. That's wonderful to uh, hear. Uh, Roger, you want to add something, or uh, because there are some questions, should I be going with the questions? Roger, would you like to? No, add? no, I've. I, okay. yeah, no, you all like to reply. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And um, I'd like to add one more, uh, one tiny thing to what Jacob has said. You know, when we're doing this open, straightforward uh, communication, again, from neuroscientific approach, you know, our brains have a neural network, you know, because, you know, the function of our brain is to survive. The main function is for us to survive as human beings. And so we just think that it's about, you know, uh, running away from danger, this and that, but our brains know what is the true thing and what is not. So. Uh, we can, uh, sometimes it's kind of a feeling. You just say that, you know, when you hear something, this is true or this is not. So it's truly important that we always, you know, make our communication straightforward, open and from the heart because uh, people feel it. People know, uh, I mean, it's not like it's brain-wise, they know what is uh, true, what is not. So I think... That was also our experience, Jacob. So thank you so much. We have many questions. Um, just let me just say, okay. Okay, one of them is from Jim from Premier Rights from USA. Thanks, Jim. Uh, hi, Jacob. Uh, we agree that we cannot wait to get together in person. And uh, Premier was very appreciative of the recent in person working event in Orlando, which was a big success. Is there any IAPA strategy for more regional, smaller face-to-face -face meetings? Yes, yes. I mean, we mentioned the, the, the trade summit event, which we planned in February in, in Europa Park. Unfortunately, this, this didn't work out. We are now planning one early June in Belgium, where you know we want to want to visit Valibi, Plopsaland, uh, two great amusement parks, and Paradiser, one of the most beautiful zoos in Europe, and also two water parks, Belvat Aqua Park and Plops Aqua. Um, you know, we are hopeful. We see actually great interest. We have more than fifty people. We just hope that you know we that the situation evolves as it as it does right now, and we see. With pleasure, the, the development, what we what we see in the United Kingdom is, is very positive, actually, with ongoing vaccination. So we hope that the rest of Europe will follow. And if 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 that allows, we want to bring people together again and, and in a regional way, because I think we all agree that um, global travel still might still might need a little bit longer to recover. So we would love to have certain opportunities of bringing people locally together 
and I looked at the window to, to down to me, you know, with Chem being there. I know, you know, one day I hope to 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 be able to to make it at, at Land of Legends because I think you you would be a wonderful host. Um, but uh, I think that is definitely the the road to go ahead to be more regional at this stage and still um, offer the same the same quality events of seeing some great facilities and exchange with each other. Thank you so much, Jacob. Thank you so much, Jim, for your question. And from 11, from Hungary, what is your opinion on guests' financial status? Those who have lost their jobs might not be able to visit water parks, but those who kept their jobs might immediately go to water parks and spend by. So which case will be more prominent? Well, what we saw in our park is uh, spendage has gone up. Yes, I mean, mm -hmm. whoever lost a job or in anything, in any economical moments, and the investments, people buying houses or cars is changes. But um, as you know, in Turkey, the second-hand cars uh, gone up from the first-hand cars, uh, the price-wise. Uh, there's always a dynamic economic uh, moments in Turkey, but um, people coming through, they spend it more. I think they send on all... Uh, theme parks has been measured, uh, if I'm wrong, Jacob can say, but uh, per person spend that you've gone up. So yes. I mean, that, is, that is definitely which we have heard from many facilities across the last year, 2020, that the per cap spend has, has gone up. There, there are two tendencies which we hear, um, which is called revenge tourism in a certain way, because people want to make up for what they have, what they have missed the past okay. 12 months. And also that we see in, in, in many countries um, a, a trend to upgrading, you know, because people, um, especially in those countries where you have social security in a way that people received furlough salaries and um, which they couldn't spend. So we see a higher saving quota in, in many countries in Europe and that they're willing to spend that in, on, on what Kubilai said, on experiences. You know, that, that, is, a, that is a key yeah. value which they now want to have is good experiences. And I think this is where they where they want to spend money obviously under the condition that they received money and and this is where i think you will see a difference between between the countries where you have um better protected um uh, better protected social security systems and and not so good security systems and and this is where where i expect a difference but in general per cap spending in the parks have been higher because once again people want to escape from the daily life they are busy with the, those coronavirus thoughts every day and now they want to get out and when they get out they want to make it perfect and i think this is yeah. this is why we see that trend yeah thank you so much um, this is a it comes to, experiences create memories i truly believe that if you take memories away from people it's forget everything the past living we don't have a life so that's the most valuable thing the attraction industry holding it the creating memory uh, I think it's priceless to create so people willing to spend on that uh, because they missed out so much memories with the parents, people, kids, and all that. Right. You're right, Jen, you're right. And I think this pandemic has shown, as I was telling, the importance of this maybe more than ever. And so that's wonderful to hear. Okay. And Roger, uh, we know that the UK mostly owns indoor water parks. If you take this in this fact into consideration, what kind of change do you foresee in visitor behavior uh, due to the pandemic at indoor places? This is your question. Yeah, I think we've probably covered quite yeah. a quite a lot of that. I did actually see it come up, and so that what's partly prompted some of the previous things I've said. Um, the, as I say, the main thing in the UK right now is that water parks will be one of the last facilities to reopen. Um, so there is still a bit of uncertainty about that. Um, the, the guy that I was actually talking to yesterday was um, John Child from the Sandcastle Water Park in Blackpool. And he kindly sent me this document there they've put together which is a really good read actually it's, it's a, mm -hmm. I think he's cribbed a few things from somewhere but it's a, effectively a risk assessment across all aspects of their operation identifying for example their um, staffing shower quarters and toilets were too small they didn't comply to some of the so they've actually 
use timings before guests come in to use some of the guest facilities within that. So some quite subtle things. They've done evaluations. I mentioned earlier about the way things are sized in terms of water areas and passive areas and ride capacities. They reckon that based on what they, when they reopened back in the in the summer, which is when we had a in the UK, a, a gap between the, the two major lockdowns, um, about a 40% uh, uh, capacity. And this is picking up really on this qualitative thing that Kublai's mentioned, um, that, that you can pre-book, they'll be opening longer, they'll be restricting sessions. Um, so, uh, so there's some really good, good information. It might not be for every park, but for example, one of the things they've picked up there is that if someone, the, the session times will be three hours so that they ramp up as the day starts and then get the turnover going on the sessions. But if you buy over five pounds worth of food and beverage, you get another half an hour because they're recognizing you're taking some time out of your activity area. So it, there's some really quite neat um, ideas going on. Uh, I like the one about the 10% pizza discount if the queues get too, too long that Jacob mentioned. So you know, there, there's some, there is something, that, but the truth of the matter is we're not reopened yet. We won't be for at least another four weeks or so. Um, so it's a bit early, early to say that. I also just saw on here about the, you know, what, what will be the reaction after COVID-19, COVID-20 and COVID-21. I think the bigger question is, what's it going to be like after COVID-22 and COVID-23? Because there's still going to be this aftermath. And if any of us here know the answer to that, we're in the wrong industry. <laughs> get out now, get, get to be a government advisor and make you millions. Um, the truth is we don't know. We don't even know how 21 is going to work out. Um, but you know, I, again, I would probably finish by with what I started. Things are improving. Vaccination, testing is going to be the key. In all the UK venues, that is the, that, that is the roadmap out. But um, on, the, on the radio this morning, a guy was saying, imagine you're, you're, you're a cyclist and you're halfway up one of the highest hills. We're about halfway up at the moment. You know, your legs are a bit tired don't stop now you know it, it's gonna go things are looking better things will get better but they won't be overnight and i th i think that would be my my riding comment thank you so much roger so the last example you gave was wonderful so we're learning all the way but we still have a way to go <laughs> it, it, it wasn't mine i play i plagiarized it from a guy on the radio so yeah i won't claim that one keep cycling <laughs> keep cycling. keep pedaling don't stop keep pedaling Perfect. Okay. Actually, we do have some other questions. I am really thankful for all those who are just asking those questions. Uh, but they're all replied. Um, they're all covered. And, and we're already out of time. And so, uh, with your permission, I'd like to uh, give you, uh, maybe, uh, if you would like to add something, I'd like to give you one more minute for each of you. And then, and uh, I'd like to thank you. Uh, anything you'd like to add? No? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, all of you. I mean, it was such a wonderful gathering. So we truly missed you a lot. And so we hope to get together, Jacob, <laughs> at IFA shows in the very near future. We try um, our very best. <laughs> I know, I know, we know. Um, so we be supporting. Everybody is waiting for this, Jacob. Everybody is waiting for this. <laughs> yes, Jacob. <laughs> it will be a truly big gathering. So if you manage to do that. So and um, thanks for all of you who have attended our summit today. And again, thank you so much, Roger, Jem, Kubilai, Jacob. So you made this. Wonderful, thanks a lot. And uh, before I close, in two days, we'll be launching uh, an innovation platform. Uh, I'll not be giving so many details, but with your permission, I'll ask my team to share a video. The name of the platform is InnoKind. And then uh, in two weeks time, we'll be doing another summit to share about it, but just uh, to make you feel curious, what is this InnoKind? So it is like humankind and innovation. So it gets together and the name is InnoKind. And start. <laughs>
So uh, this will be an innovation platform uh, and it's open to everyone from our industry. And so we'll, uh, we will be sending out a, a um, we were sending out all the information on uh, Thursday, but you'll be you're the first to hear about this. So, thank you once again. Thank you once again. Hope to see you thank all. Thank you. Bye bye. Have bye a great bye. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> ciao. Ciao.